MTV, Music Television, is an American cable channel officially launched on August 1, 1981. Based in New York City, it serves as the flagship property of the MTV Entertainment Group, part of Paramount Media Networks, a division of Paramount Global. The channel originally aired music videos and related programming as guided by television personalities known as video jockeys, or VJs. MTV was one of the American cable channels which was available in other countries that became a cult hit across the world and was one of the factors in cable programming's rise to fame and American corporations overwhelmingly dominating the television economy in the 1990s. In the years since its inception, it significantly toned down its focus on music in favor of original reality programming for teenagers and young adults. Since the late 2010s, MTV has devoted its programming schedule to select programs, primarily Ridiculousness, which in June 2020 aired for 113 hours out of the network's entire 168-hour lineup. MTV has spawned numerous sister channels in the United States and affiliated channels internationally, some of which have since gone independent. Approximately 90.6 million households in the U.S. received MTV as of January 2017. In the 1970s, music television focused on live performances, with shows such as The Midnight Special, In Concert, and The Old Grey Whistle Test. Numerous major musical acts had made music videos to accompany their songs, including The Beatles, Bob Dylan, and Queen, but the concept and format had not been widely established. In 1979, executives at the newly formed Warner American Express Satellite Entertainment Company felt teenagers were an overlooked and potentially lucrative audience, and hoped to develop a television format to target them. MTV's original format was created by the executive Robert W. Pittman, later the president and CEO of MTV Networks. He tested the format by producing and hosting a 15-minute show, Album Tracks, on New York City's WNBC-TV in the late 1970s. Pittman's boss, Warner Executive Vice President John Lack, had shepherded Pop Clips, a TV series created by the former Monkees member Michael Nesmith, whose attention had turned to the music video format in the late 1970s. On Saturday, August 1, 1981, at 12.01 a.m. Eastern Time, MTV was launched with the words Ladies and Gentlemen, Rock and Roll, spoken by John Lack and played over footage of the first Space Shuttle launch countdown of Columbia, which took place earlier that year, and the launch of Apollo 11. The words were followed by the original MTV theme song, a rock tune composed by Jonathan Elias and John Peterson, playing over the U.S. flag change to show MTV's logo changing into different textures and designs. MTV producers Alan Goodman and Fred Seibert used this public domain footage as a concept, Seibert said that they had originally planned to use Neil Armstrong's one small step quote, but lawyers said that Armstrong owned his name and likeness and that he had refused, so the quote was replaced with a beeping sound. A shortened version of the shuttle launch ID ran at the top of every hour in different forms, from MTV's first day until it was pulled in early 1986 in the wake of the Challenger disaster. The first music video on MTV, which at the time was only available to homes in New Jersey, was the Buggles video Killed the Radio Star. It was followed by Pat Benatar's You Better Run. Occasionally the screen went black when an employee at MTV inserted a tape into a VCR. MTV's lower third graphics near the beginnings and ends of videos eventually used the recognizable Cavill typeface for about 25 years, but they varied on MTV's first day, set in a different typeface, and including details such as the song's year and record label. MTV's on-air programming was originally produced from the Teletronics Studio facility at West 33rd Street in Manhattan, New York. Programming was uplinked to satellite from a facility in Hopog, New York that also served as the uplink for sister networks Nickelodeon and the Movie Channel. Originally, then owner Warner MX Satellite Entertainment had planned to uplink MTV from a facility located at the studios of WIVB-TV in Buffalo, New York, where Nickelodeon and the Movie Channel had been. Uplinked, said facility was planned to be expanded to handle MTV's needs, 
but the deal with WIVB fell apart when Warner Amex was unable to reach a deal with Channel 4's ownership concerning a long-term lease. MTV later moved studio facilities to Unitel Video's complex located on 57th Street, ironically located across the street from the CBS Broadcast Center, owned by future corporate sibling CBS, in 1987, remaining until 1995 when MTV chose to begin producing studio content in-house. As programming chief, Robert W. Pittman recruited and managed a team of co-founders for the launch that included Tom Freston, who succeeded Pittman as CEO of MTV Networks, Fred Seibert, and John Sykes. They were joined by Carolyn Baker, original head of talent and acquisition, Marshall Cohen, original head of research, Gail Sparrow, of talent and acquisition, Sue Steinberg, executive producer, Julian Goldberg, Steve Lawrence, Jeff Bolton, studio producers and MTV news writers slash associate producers Liz Nealon, Nancy Lophook, and Robin Zorn, Steve Casey, creator of the name MTV and its first program director, Marcy Braffman, Richard Skinkman, Ronald E. Buzz Brindle, and Robert Morton. Kenneth M. Miller is credited as MTV's first technical director at its New York City-based network operations facility. Within two months, record stores were selling music local radio stations were not playing, such as Men at Work, Bow Wow Wow and The Human League. MTV also sparked the second British invasion, featuring existing videos by British acts who had used the format for several years, for example, on BBC's Top of the Pops. MTV targeted an audience of ages 12 to 34. However its self-conducted research showed that over 50% of its audience was 12 to 24, and that this group watched for an average of 30 minutes to 2 hours a day. As the PBS series Frontline explored, MTV was a driving force that catapulted music videos to a mainstream audience, turning music videos into an art form as well as a marketing machine that became beneficial to artists. MTV's earliest format was modeled after our, album-oriented rock, radio. It underwent a transition to emulate a full Top 40 station in 1984. Fresh-faced young people hosted its programming and introduced videos. Many VJs became celebrities in their own right. MTV's five original VJs in 1981 were Nina Blackwood, Mark Goodman, Alan Hunter, J.J. Jackson and Martha Quinn. Popular New York DJ Meg Griffin was going to be a VJ, but decided against it at the last minute. The VJs were hired to fit certain demographics the channel was trying to obtain, Goodman was the affable everyman, Hunter, the popular jock, Jackson, the hip radio veteran, Blackwood, the bombshell vixen, and Quinn, the girl next door. Due to uncertainty around the channel's success, the VJs were told not to buy permanent residences and to keep their second jobs. The VJs recorded intro and outro voiceovers before broadcast, along with music news, interviews, concert dates, and promotions. These segments appeared to air live and debut on MTV 24-7, but they were pre-taped within a regular work week at MTV's studios. Rock bands and performers of the 1980s who appeared on MTV ranged from new wave to soft rock and heavy metal including Adam Ant, Brian Adams, Pat Benatar, Blondie, The Cars, Culture Club, Def Leppard, Dire Straits, whose 1985 song and video Money for Nothing included the slogan I Want My MTV in its lyrics, Duran Duran, Eurythmics, Peter Gabriel, Genesis, Daryl Hall and John Oates. Billy Idol, Billy Joel, John Mellencamp, Motley Crue, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, The Police, Prince, Rat, Ultravox, U2, Van Halen and ZZ Top. In 1984, more record companies and artists began making clips, realizing the popularity of MTV and the growing medium. To accommodate the influx of videos, MTV announced changes to its playlists in the November 3, 1984, issue of Billboard that took effect the next week. Playlist rotation categories were expanded from 3, light, medium, heavy, to 7, new, light, breakout, medium, active, heavy and power. 
This ensured that artists with chart hits got the exposure they deserved, with medium being a home for established hits still on the climb up to the top 10, and heavy a home for the big hits, without the bells and whistles, just the exposure they commanded. Flashdance, 1983, was the first film whose promoters supplied MTV with musical clips to compose promotional videos, which the channel included in its regular rotation. The channel also rotated the music videos of Weird Al Yankovic, who made a career out of parodying other artists' videos. It also aired several of Yankovic's specials in the 1980s and 1990s, under the title Al TV. PSAs and promotion of charitable causes and NFPs were woven into the MTV fabric. In response to the AIDS epidemic, MTV initiated a safe sex campaign in 1985, believing that many youths would be more open to the message there than from their parents. Its safe sex campaign continues today as It's Your Sex Life. In 1984, the channel produced its first MTV Video Music Awards show, or VMAs. The first award show, in 1984, was punctuated by a live performance by Madonna of Like a Virgin. The statuettes that are handed out at the Video Music Awards are of the MTV Moon Man, the channel's original image from its first broadcast in 1981. Presently, the Video Music Awards are MTV's most watched annual event. MTV began its annual spring break coverage in 1986, setting up temporary operations in Daytona Beach, Florida, for a week in March, broadcasting live eight hours per day. Spring Break is a youth culture event, MTV's Vice President Doug Herzog said at the time. We wanted to be part of it for that reason. It makes good sense for us to come down and go live from the center of it, because obviously the people there are the kinds of people who watch MTV. The channel later expanded its beach-themed events to the summer, dedicating most of each summer season to broadcasting live from a beach house at different locations away from New York City, eventually leading to channel-wide branding throughout the summer in the 1990s and early 2000s such as Motel California, Summer Share, Isle of MTV, SoCal Summer, Summer in the Keys, and Sure Thing. MTV VJs hosted blocks of music videos, interview artists and bands, and introduced live performances and other programs from the Beach House location each summer. MTV also held week-long music events that took over the presentation of the channel. Examples from the 1990s and 2000s include All Access Week, a week in the summer dedicated to live concerts and festivals, Spankin' New Music Week, a week in the fall dedicated to brand new music videos, and week-long specials that culminated in a particular live event, such as Wanna Be a VJ and the Video Music Awards. At the end of each year, MTV takes advantage of its home location in New York City to broadcast live coverage on New Year's Eve in Times Square. Several live music performances are featured alongside interviews with artists and bands that were influential throughout the year. For many years from the 1980s to the 2000s, the channel upheld a tradition of having a band perform a cover song at midnight immediately following the beginning of the new year. Throughout its history, MTV has covered global benefit concert series Live. For most of July 13, 1985, MTV showed the Live Aid concerts, held in London and Philadelphia and organized by Bob Geldof and Midgeur to raise funds for famine relief in Ethiopia. While the ABC network showed only selected highlights during prime time, MTV broadcast 16 hours of coverage. Along with VH1, MTV broadcast the Live 8 concerts, a series of concerts set in the G8 states and South Africa, on July 2, 2005. Live 8 preceded the 31st G8 summit and the 20th anniversary of Live 8. MTV drew heavy criticism for its coverage of Live 8. The network cut to commercials, VJ commentary, or other performances during performances. Complaints surfaced on the internet over MTV interrupting the reunion of Pink Floyd. In response, MTV president Van Toffler stated that he wanted to broadcast highlights from every venue of Live 8 on MTV and VH1, and clarified that network hosts talked over performances only in transition to commercials, informative segments, or other musical performances. 
Toffler acknowledged that MTV should not have placed such a high priority on showing so many acts, at the expense of airing complete sets by key artists. He also blamed the Pink Floyd interruption on a mandatory cable affiliate break. MTV averaged 1.4 million viewers for its original July 2nd broadcast of Live 8. Consequently, MTV and VH1 aired five hours of uninterrupted Live 8 coverage on July 9, with each channel airing other blocks of artists. 1986 brought the departures of three of the five original VJs, as J.J. Jackson moved back to Los Angeles and returned to radio, while Nina Blackwood moved on to pursue new roles in television. Martha Quinn's contract was not renewed in late 1986 and she departed the network. She was brought back in early 1989 and stayed until 1992. Downtown Julie Brown was hired as the first new VJ as a replacement. In mid-1987, Alan Hunter and Mark Goodman ceased being full-time MTV VJs. Beginning in late 1997, MTV progressively reduced its airing of rock music videos, leading to the slogan among skeptics, Rock is dead. 2. Years later, in the fall of 1999, MTV announced a special return of the Rock Weekend, in which new rock acts received airtime, after which a compilation album was released. By 2000, Linkin Park, Sum 41, Jimmy Eat World, Mudvayne, Cold, At the Drive-In, Alien Ant Farm, and other acts were added to the musical rotation. MTV also launched the subscription channel MTVX to play rock music videos exclusively. In 1997, MTV introduced its new studios in Times Square. MTV created four shows in the late 1990s that centered on music videos, MTV Live, Total Request, Say What, and 12 Angry Viewers. A year later, in 1998, MTV merged Total Request and MTV Live into a live daily top 10 countdown show, Total Request Live, which became known as TRL. The original host was Carson Daly. The show included a live studio audience and was filmed in a windowed studio that allowed crowds to look in. According to Nielsen, the average audience for the show was at its highest in 1999 and continued with strong numbers through 2001. The program played the top 10 pop, rock, R&B, and hip-hop music videos, and featured live interviews with artists and celebrities. In 2003, Carson Daly left MTV and TRL to focus on his late-night talk show on NBC. The series came to an end with a special finale episode, Total Finale Live, which aired November 16, 2008, and featured hosts and guests that previously appeared on the show. From 1998 to 2003, MTV also aired several other music video programs from its studios. These programs included Say What? Karaoke, a game show hosted by Dave Holmes. In the early 2000s MTV aired VJ for a Day, hosted by Ray Munz. MTV also aired Hot Zone, hosted by Ananda Lewis, which featured pop music videos during the midday time period. Other programs at the time included Sucker Free, and Beat Sweet. Around 1999 through 2001, as MTV aired fewer music videos throughout the day, it regularly aired compilation specials from its then 20-year history to look back on its roots. An all-encompassing special, MTV Uncensored, premiered in 1999 and was later released as a book. Janet Jackson became the inaugural honoree of the MTV Icon Award, an annual recognition of artists who have made significant contributions to music, music video, and pop culture while tremendously impacting the MTV generation. Subsequent recipients included Aerosmith, Metallica, and The Cure. From 1995 to 2000, MTV played 36.5% fewer music videos. MTV president Van Toffler stated, clearly, the novelty of just showing music videos has worn off. It's required us to reinvent ourselves to a contemporary audience. The network launched MTV Radio Network in 1995 with Westwood One. Despite targeted efforts to play certain types of music videos in limited rotation, 
MTV greatly reduced its overall rotation of music videos by the mid-2000s. A 10 p.m. programming block for top shows and specials was created and called the 10 Spot. Dana Fuchs was the promo voice actor and writer for ads promoting these shows. While music videos were featured on MTV up to 8 hours per day in 2000, the year 2008 saw an average of just 3 hours of music videos per day on MTV. It's been speculated that the rise of social media and websites like YouTube as an outlet for the promotion and viewing of music videos led to this reduction. During this time, MTV hired Nancy Bennett as Senior VP of Creative and Content Development for MTV Networks Music. As the decade progressed, MTV video blocks would be relegated to the early morning hours. During his acceptance speech at the 2007 MTV Video Music Awards, Justin Timberlake implored MTV to play more damn videos. In response to these changes, over the next decade, MTV would engage in channel drift, gradually expanding its programming outside of music videos with programming lightly or heavily related to music. MTV became known for its reality programming, some of which followed the lives of musicians, The Osbournes, a reality show based on the everyday life of Black Sabbath frontman Ozzy Osbourne and his family premiered in 2002 and would become one of the network's premiere shows. It also kick-started a musical career for Kelly Osbourne, while Sharon Osbourne went on to host her own self-titled talk show on U.S. television. Production ended on the Osbournes in November 2004. 2007's A Shot at Love with Tila Tequila, chronicling MySpace sensation Tila Tequila's journey to find a companion, was the subject of criticism due to Tequila's bisexuality. MTV would also venture into adult animation, with shows like Celebrity Deathmatch, Undergrads, Clone High, and Daria each becoming cult classics. Simultaneously, MTV spawned the paranormal reality TV genre with the broadcast of MTV's Fear in 2000. Prior to Total Request Live ending its run in 2008, MTV was experimenting with its remaining music programming under new formats. MTV first premiered a new music video programming block called FNMTV, and a weekly special event called FNMTV Premieres, hosted from Los Angeles by Pete Wentz of the band Fall Out Boy, which was designed to premiere new music videos and have viewers provide instantaneous feedback. AMTV an early morning block, debuted in 2009. The block would rebrand as Music Feed in 2013 with a reduced schedule and, unlike FNMTV, featured many full-length music videos, news updates, interviews, and performances. MTV would continue to air music programming over the next decade, with the return of MTV Unplugged in 2009, the debut of 10 on top in May 2010, and Hip Hop POV on April 12, 2012. 2009 saw the debut of Jersey Shore, which became a rating success throughout its run and spawned the MTV Shores franchise, but would attract various controversies. 98 with backlash towards what some consider too much superficial content on the network, a 2009 New York Times article also revealed plans to shift MTV's focus towards more socially conscious media, which the article labels MTV for the Obama era. Shortly after Michael Jackson died on June 25, the channel aired several hours of Jackson's music videos, accompanied by live news specials featuring reactions from MTV personalities and other celebrities. The temporary shift in MTV's programming culminated the following week with the channel's live coverage of Jackson's memorial service. MTV aired similar one-hour live specials with music videos and news updates following the death of Whitney Houston on February 11, 2012, and the death of Adam Yach of the Beastie Boys on May 4, 2012. In February 2010, MTV would drop the music television branding. The network would still air video premieres on occasion, through both television and real-time interaction with artists and celebrities on its website. Throughout the decade, music programming on the network would be scaled back. In April 2016, then-appointed MTV President Sean Atkins announced plans to restore music programming to the channel. 
On April 21, 2016, MTV announced that new Unplugged episodes will begin airing, as well as a new weekly performance series called Wonderland. On that same day, immediately after the death of Prince, MTV interrupted its usual programming to air Prince's music videos. In July 2017, it was announced that TRL would be returning to the network on October 2, 2017. Throughout the 2010s, it was observed that MTV's daily schedule came to predominantly consist of film broadcasts and frequent marathons of select original programming, similar to other cable networks. In 2020, Reality Blurred criticized the network for its over-reliance on ridiculousness marathons. Alongside its unscripted slate, MTV would produce more scripted programming. Such shows included Awkward, an American version of Skins, and a reimagining of Teen Wolf. In June 2012, the network announced the development of a television series based on the Scream franchise. As MTV would pivot back to unscripted programming towards the end of the decade, some of these shows would be moved to other networks. Chris McCarthy was named president of MTV in 2016. In 2021, McCarthy was named president and CEO of MTV Entertainment Group, which also oversees Comedy Central, Paramount Network, TV Land, CMT, and Smithsonian Channel. As MTV expanded, music videos and VJ-guided programming were no longer the centerpiece of its programming. The channel's programming has covered a wide variety of genres and formats aimed at adolescents and young adults. In addition to its original programming, MTV has also aired original and syndicated programs from Paramount-owned siblings and third-party networks. MTV is also a producer of films aimed at young adults through its production label, MTV Films, and has aired both its own theatrically released films and original made-for-television movies from MTV Studios in addition to acquired films. In 2010, a study by the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation found that of 207.5 hours of prime-time programming on MTV, 42% included content reflecting the lives of gay, bisexual, and transgender people. This was the highest in the industry and the highest percentage ever. In 2018, MTV launched a new production unit under the MTV Studios name focused on producing new versions of MTV's library shows. This was later renamed MTV Entertainment Studios. The channel has been a target of criticism by different groups about programming choices, social issues, political correctness, sensitivity, censorship, and a perceived negative social influence on young people. Portions of the content of MTV's programs and productions have come under controversy in the general news media and among social groups that have taken offense. Some within the music industry criticized what they saw as MTV's homogenization of rock and roll, including the punk band The Dead Kennedys, whose song MTV. MTV refused other black artists' videos, such as Rick James' Super Freak, because they did not fit the channel's carefully selected album-oriented rock format at the time. The exclusion enraged James, who publicly advocated the addition of more black artists to the channel. David Bowie also questioned MTV's lack of black artists during an on-air interview with VJ Mark Goodman in 1983. MTV's original head of talent and acquisition, Carolyn B. Baker, who was black, questioned why the definition of music had to be so narrow, as did a few others outside the network. Years later, Baker said, the party line at MTV was that we weren't playing black music because of the research, but the research was based on ignorance. We were young, we were cutting edge. We didn't have to be on the cutting edge of racism. Nevertheless, it was Baker who rejected Rick James' Super Freak video because there were half-naked women in it, and it was a piece of crap. As a black woman, I did not want that representing my people as the first black video on MTV. The network's director of music programming, Buzz Brindle, Told an interviewer in 2006, MTV was originally designed to be a rock music channel. It was difficult for MTV to find African American artists whose music fit the channel's format that leaned toward rock at the outset. 
Writers Craig Marks and Rob Tannenbaum noted that the channel aired videos by plenty of white artists who didn't play rock. Andrew Goodwin later wrote, MTV denied racism, on the grounds that it merely followed the rules of the rock business. MTV Senior Executive Vice President Leigh Garland complained decades later, the worst thing was that racism bullshit, there were hardly any videos being made by black artists. Record companies weren't funding them. They never got charged with racism. However, critics of that defense pointed out that record companies were not funding videos for black artists because they knew they would have difficulty persuading MTV to play them. In celebrating the 40th anniversary of the network's launch in 2021, current MTV Entertainment Group President Chris McCarthy acknowledged that, oh, any of the bigger mistakes in the early years was not playing enough diverse music, but the nice thing that I've always learned at MTV is we have no problem owning our mistakes, quickly correcting them and trying to do the right thing and always follow where the audience is going. Before 1983, Michael Jackson also struggled for MTV airtime. To resolve the struggle and finally break the color barrier, the president of CBS Records, Walter Yetnikoff, denounced MTV in a strong, profane statement, threatening to take away its right to play any of the label's music. However, Leigh Garland, then acquisitions head, said he decided to air Jackson's Billie Jean video without pressure from CBS, a statement later contradicted by CBS head of business affairs David Benjamin in Vanity Fair. According to the Austin Chronicle, Jackson's video for the song Billie Jean was the video that broke the color barrier, even though the channel itself was responsible for erecting that barrier in the first place. But. Change was not immediate. Billie Jean was not added to MTV's medium rotation playlist, two to three airings per day, until it reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. In the final week of March, it was in heavy rotation, one week before the MTV debut of Jackson's Beat It video. Prince's Little Red Corvette joined both videos in heavy rotation at the end of April. At the beginning of June, Electric Avenue by Eddie Grant joined Billie Jean, which was still in heavy rotation until mid-June. At the end of August, She Works Hard for the Money by Donna Summer was in heavy rotation on the channel. Herbie Hancock's Rocket and Lionel Richie's All Night Long were placed in heavy rotation at the end of October and the beginning of November respectively. In the final week of November, Donna Summer's Unconditional Love was in heavy rotation. When Jackson's elaborate video for Thriller was released late that year, raising the bar for what a video could be, the network's support for it was total, subsequently, more pop and R&B videos were played on MTV. Following Jackson's and Prince's breakthroughs on MTV, Rick James did several interviews where he brushed off the accomplishment as tokenism, saying in a 1983 interview, in an episode of Mike Judge Presents, Tales from the Tour Bus on James, that any black artist that had their video played on MTV should pull their videos off MTV. MTV has edited a number of music videos to remove references to drugs, sex, violence, weapons, racism, homophobia, and slash or advertising. Many music videos aired on the channel were either censored, moved to late night rotation, or banned entirely from the channel. In addition to its regular programming, MTV has a long history of promoting social, political, and environmental activism in young people. Since its launch in 1981, the brand MTV has expanded to include many additional properties beyond the original MTV channel, including a variety of sister channels in the US, dozens of affiliated channels around the world, and an internet presence through MTV.com and related websites. MTV operates a group of channels under MTV Networks, a name that continues to be used for the individual units of the now Paramount Media Networks, a division of corporate parent Paramount Global. In 1985, MTV saw the introduction of its first regular sister channel, VH1, which was originally an acronym for Video Hits 1 and was designed to play adult contemporary music videos. From now on, VH1 is aimed at celebrity and popular culture programming which include many reality shows. Another sister channel, CMT, targets the southern culture market. 
The advent of satellite television and digital cable brought MTV greater channel diversity, including its current sister channels MTV2 and Spanish-speaking MTV TR3S, now TR3S, which initially played music videos exclusively but now focus on other programming. MTV also formerly broadcast MTVU on campuses at various universities until 2018, when the MTV Networks on Campus division was sold, and the channel remained as a digital cable channel only. MTV used to also have MTV Hits and MTV X channels until these were converted into Nick Music and MTV Jams, respectively. MTV Jams was later rebranded as Bet Jams in 2015. In January 2006, MTV launched MTV HD, a 1080i high-definition simulcast feed of MTV. Until Viacom's main master control was upgraded in 2013, only the network's original series after 2010, with some pre-2010 content, are broadcast in high-definition, while music videos, despite being among the first television works to convert to high-definition presentation in the mid-2000s, were presented in 4,3 standard definition, forcing them into a window-boxing type of presentation, since that time, all music videos are presented in HD and are framed to their director's preference. Jersey Shore, despite being shot with widescreen HD cameras, was also presented with SD window boxing, though the 2018 Family Vacation Revival is in full HD. The vast majority of providers carry MTV HD. MTV Networks also operates MTV Live, a high-definition channel that features original HD music programming and HD versions of music-related programs from MTV, VH1 and CMT. The channel was launched in January 2006 as MHD, Music, High Definition. The channel was officially rebranded as MTV Live on February 1, 2016. In 2005 and 2006, MTV launched a list of channels for Asian Americans. The first channel was MTV Desi, launched in July 2005, dedicated towards Indian Americans. Next was MTV Chi, in December 2005, which catered to Chinese Americans. The third was MTV K, launched in June 2006 and targeted toward Korean Americans. Each of these channels featured music videos and shows from MTV's international affiliates as well as original US programming, promos, and packaging. All three of these channels ceased broadcasting on April 30, 2007. On August 1, 2016, the 35th anniversary of the original MTV's launch, VH1 Classic was rebranded as MTV Classic. The channel's programming focused on classic music videos and programming, including notable episodes of MTV Unplugged and VH1 Storytellers, but skews more towards the 1980s, 1990s, and 2000s. The network aired encores of former MTV series such as Beavis and Butthead and Laguna Beach, The Real Orange County. The network's relaunch included a broadcast of MTV's first hour on the air, which was also simulcast on MTV and online via Facebook live streaming. MTV Classic only retained three original VH1 Classic programs, which were That Metal Show, Metal Evolution, and Behind the Music Remastered, although repeats of current and former VH1 programs such as Pop-Up Video and VH1 Storytellers remained on the schedule. However, the rebranded MTV Classic had few viewers, and declined quickly to become the least-watched English-language subscription network rated by Nielsen at the end of 2016. At the start of 2017, it was reorganized into an all-video network. In the late 1980s, before the World Wide Web, MTV VJ Adam Curry began experimenting on the Internet. He registered the then-unclaimed domain name MTV.com in 1993 with the idea of being MTV's unofficial new voice on the Internet. Although this move was sanctioned by his supervisors at MTV Networks at the time, when Curry left to start his own web portal design and hosting company, MTV subsequently sued him for the domain name, which led to an out-of-court settlement. 
the service hosted at the domain name was originally branded MTV Online during MTV's first few years of control over it in the mid-1990s. It served as a counterpart to the America Online portal for MTV content, which existed at AOL keyword MTV until approximately the end of the 1990s. After this time, the website became known as simply MTV.com and served as the internet hub for all MTV and MTV news content. MTV.com experimented with entirely video-based layouts between 2005 and 2007. The experiment began in April 2005 as MTV Overdrive, a streaming video service that supplemented the regular MTV.com website. Shortly after the 2006 MTV Video Music Awards, which were streamed on MTV.com and heavily used the MTV Overdrive features, MTV introduced a massive change for MTV.com, transforming the entire site into a Flash video-based entity. Much of users' feedback about the Flash-based site was negative, demonstrating a dissatisfaction with videos that played automatically, commercials that could not be skipped or stopped, and the slower speed of the entire website. The experiment ended in February 2007 as MTV.com reverted to a traditional HTML-based website design with embedded video clips, in the style of YouTube and some other video-based websites. From 2006 to 2007, MTV operated an online channel, MTV International, targeted to the broad international market. The purpose of the online channel was to air commercial-free music videos once the television channel started concentrating on shows unrelated to music videos or music-related programming. The channel responded to the rise of the Internet as the new central place to watch music videos in October 2008 by launching MTV Music, later called MTV Hive, a website that featured thousands of music videos from MTV and VH1's video libraries, dating back to the earliest videos from 1981. A newly created division of the company, MTV New Media, announced in 2008 that it would produce its own original web series, in an attempt to create a bridge between old and new media. The programming is available to viewers via personal computers, cell phones, iPods, and other digital devices. In the summer of 2012, MTV launched a music discovery website called the MTV Artists Platform, also known as Artists.MTV. MTV explained, while technology has made it way easier for artists to produce and distribute their own music on their own terms, it hasn't made it any simpler to find a way to cut through all the internet noise and speak directly to all of their potential fans. The summer launch of the platform is an attempt to help music junkies and musicians close the gap by providing a one-stop place where fans can listen to and buy music and purchase concert tickets and merchandise. MTV.com remains the official website of MTV, and it expands on the channel's broadcasts by bringing additional content to its viewers. In 2022, it was revised to mostly focus on direct consumers to content on Paramount Plus and Pluto TV. The site featured an online version of MTV News and Podcasts. It has TV Everywhere authenticated streaming. The news site is defunct but still can be accessed with prior movie features, profiles and interviews with recording artists and from MTV's television programs. A related MTV app is available on mobile platforms and connected TV devices. Thank you for watching this video.